Hi everyone, this is Debbie Happy Cohen with Joy Based Living and I'm going to ramble a little bit today. Hope you're having a happy new year. It's the middle of January right now and the topic on YouTube for me lately has been about narcissistic abuse and healing from the effects of it and I'm simultaneously over the conversation and very much engaged in it for different reasons than before. Um, a few people who I've been close with or working with have let me know that it's really helping them and I don't know why it's so shocking to me maybe because most of the adults that I know would prefer to hide the truth rather than face the truth um, nobody wants to talk about family members that are acting like assholes um, you know nobody wants to rock the boat that much um, especially if they've been through narcissistic abuse it's not just a fear of being alone, but there's also fear of security um, because um, narcissists are, are bullies and um, the fear is there. It's real. It's there for a good reason. Um, and so I guess I'd like to share with you three experiences I had recently that um, moved me to keep to keep engaging this conversation. One of them was with a dear friend of mine who, um, she has a, an older sibling who was um, narcissistic and very possibly a psychopath as well. Um, and I straight up asked her, I'm like, I know that you've come a long way in this you know healing for yourself and and um, sometimes I feel like I'm talking way too much about narcissistic abuse because it's on the table and um, I can't seem to just exit the conversation and and I said do you want me to stop talking about it and she said she said Debbie I feel like I'm on a bicycle with training wheels and I want to be able to ride without training wheels and part of it is because, you know, she'll come to me and tell me about very specific situations that are going on and I will help her navigate it. Like, oh, this is what's going on. This is what he wants to take away from you. This is how he wants to hurt you. This is, you know, it's kind of like a real clean breakdown of what's happening where the narcissist wants you to feel all confused and convoluted and focused on them and ruining your holidays and all that stuff. It's like really clear to me I've been able to see through a lot of it because of the homework that I've done so she's like yeah she's like I want uh, I was and I was shocked really by the honesty and that was coming forward from her like give me more I'm like oh my god okay another one was um a younger person who normally doesn't like to read um he prefers to listen to material and um I invited him to one of the, um, I started a, a post in, in one of the inner conversations at, at Joy Base Living and a uh, members only conversation. And, and, um, it was a post I started literally like a year and a month ago about narcissistic abuse awareness. It was just kind of coming out of me and at the time, and I didn't know that it was going to turn into a thread that would last for a year. Um, with a lot of engagement from the community over the whole year. And, and I thought, okay, well, I'll let him read the first few paragraphs and see, um, you know, see if it's helpful to him. And, I thought, oh, he'll be done in 30 seconds and then I'll get bored. And like five minutes later, he was still reading the first few paragraphs. And I'm like, I said, what's going on? And he's like, Debbie, this is cocaine for my brain. And I'm like, 
what are you talking about? What do you mean that's, what do you mean that's cocaine for your brain? He's like, Debbie, this is what I've been experiencing. This, this is it. This is what I'm going through. And this is like putting words to it. And I'm like, okay, okay, surprise number two. And then another one is somebody who's extremely psychologically well-educated. She does her homework. She can meet me toe for toe. We go 3,000 feet deep and she's like right with me. She's like awesome. And um, I sent her some of the leading edge research that's out there. Um, and because she'd been going through some stuff and she wrote me back and she's like loaded with lots of stuff in her life. Like she's not just like, Oh, hand me more stuff. She's like a busy person. I sent this to her. She's like, Oh my God. She, she said, I feel like I can stand up now. And those moments have lifted me and given me reason to continue, but not just to continue, but really to consider why I'm continuing and what is it that I love. There's two things I love. I love seeing people that I care about be set free. And what are they being set free from? They're being set free from being trapped in realities that, that don't belong to them in realities that other people either want them to or used to want them to buy into and they haven't changed it inside of their psyche yet um, because of narcissistic abuse and gaslighting. And so, you know, setting them free is I feel like I'm helping cut cords for them. And the other thing is I've always loved kids. And something that's true about kids and about people who are healing from narcissistic abuse <laughs> is that both of them love the truth. <laughs> People who are healing from narcissistic abuse have had reality fucked with. That's, I mean, that's the bottom line. Like, whatever they've been told about themselves. And the two bottom line lies are, um, you're not capable and you're not worthy. Like, you are really a strong person. You can make things good for everybody else. But you're not capable of um, really... Your, your, your job is to regulate the narcissist, not yourself. And your job is to be in fear of the narcissist so you can keep like puffing up the narcissist. Um, and so the, the lie is you're not capable and you're not worthy of feeling good and feeling strong on your own for your own behalf. And when that, when that freedom from that lie happens, um, joy is possible. Um, I don't think that there, I don't think that joy is possible when your reality is messed with under, uh, under a regime of fear. I know that sounds so obvious. It just sounds so obvious. Um, but when you're hooked into a narcissistically abusive relationship, love is often part of it and you believe that you love the other person and then that love which is not necessarily true um there's a lot of trickery involved and so you have to like kind of tease it out and weed out like what's true and what's real and inside of that healing the other thing that i see is that when people start getting validation for what they experienced and for who they really are. Um, first, it's like, you know, it can be scary. It can be a relief. And then the other thing that can happen is when their true self starts coming forward, that can be scary also because they were taught to not put themselves in the limelight, to not put their truth in the limelight because they're, they could be threatened. Their survival could be threatened. Their security could be threatened. So, um, I decided rather than waiting for like a major big aha, I would just give you an update on where I am and what I'm experiencing in, in presenting this information and making it available for you. Um, if you have questions or comments or anything that you're going through, let me know. Um, one more thing. The other bridge that I'm making is, you know, 
how is joy-based living important in this conversation and how does it relate? And one of my friends stated the obvious today. And when somebody states the obvious, I kind of want to like bow down to them. <laughs> like, I don't mean it as like an insult. I, I love it when people mention the obvious to me. It's like, oh, thank you. That's gold. It's gold. And, um, you know, at Joy Based Living, we practice telling the truth about our experience and then dousing it with honor, commitment, and loyalty, dousing ourselves with honor, commitment, and loyalty. And if you've been through narcissistic abuse, man, that is like food for the soul. So if you're looking for that kind of practice, that's what we're doing at Joy Based Living. So if you're interested in that kind of practice, in that kind of conversation, um, go to joybaseliving.com and check out the ebook and see if it resonates with you. Um, I'm working on making that bridge more clear between narcissistic abuse and joy-based living actually on the website. Um, and I'm still working out how to do that. Um, this is kind of an unexpected little twist of lime in the storyline of joy-based living. So thank you for being with me and, um, we're on like 11 minutes now, so I'm going to close it now. Thank you. And until next time, blessings.